Hello viewers, welcome to the next session of the medicine series. So in succession of the previous video of mine, where I have discussed about the definition and the types of pneumonia, today the next succession to that series, that is the pathology of pneumonia I'll be discussing today. So students out there, so in the pathology of pneumonia, what I'm going to emphasize is upon the types of pneumonia and what are the manifestations as to what are the clinical manifestations and what are the uh, changes what are occurring at the cellular level. So students, on talking of the pathology of pneumonia, we are going to discuss about the four types of pneumonia. So the four types of pneumonia can be looked upon as the first type that is, it is the lobar pneumonia. So that first type, it is of the lobar pneumonia. The next is the bronco pneumonia. The third is the interstitial pneumonia and fourth is the miliary pneumonia. So students, the first that is the lobar pneumonia suggests that the it is going to, as the name is suggesting, that the lobar pneumonia is affecting a, just a single lobe of the lung. So as we already know in the anatomy that the lung is divided into the right and the left lung and the right lung is going to have three lobes whereas the left lung comprises of the two lobes. So in case of the lobar pneumonia, only a particular lobe of the lung is going to get involved. So hence the name lobar pneumonia. So it is mostly seen in the pneumococcal pneumonia. It is mostly seen in pneumococcal pneumonia and entire lobe, whichever lobe is there, whether it be the out of the three lobes of the right lung and the two lobes of the left lung, whichever lobe is there, the entire lobe of the lung is involved. So the stages there are in lobar pneumonia, we'll be having the four stages. That is the first stage, it is the stage of congestion. So the stage of con congestion occurs within, the, within 24 hours of infection. And mostly the features what are seen is that the lung parenchyma is highly vascular over here. So, and it also becomes edematous and there are scanty amount of neutrophils can also be seen. Neutrophils are present, but there is very, there are very few neutrophils. That is scanty neutrophils are present. Moving on to the next stage, that is the second stage, it is known as the red hepatization. So the term hepatization is actually referring to hepatic means liver. So hepatization means that now the lung is going to transform and is going to look, give the look of a <clears throat> somewhat, it is going to resemble to a liver. So moving on to the red hepatization. So in red hepatization, what we find is there are numerous RBCs, what is found in, what is, what are found there and along with neutrophils. So these neutrophils are there and accord and one more thing, very important, very distinguishing of red hepatization is that the fibrin you can in on observing the uh, alveoli, we are going to find fibrin in the alveoli. So this all things that is the number of our numerous RBCs, the neutrophils and the fibrin in the alveoli is going to lead to a red airless lung. So it is going to lead into a red airless lung and it is and the lung is going to have a consistency which is very, which is very similar to that of a liver. So moving on to the next stage that is the gray hepatization. So in the stage of gray hepatization what the feature, what clinical features are seen that is the lung parenchyma is going to give somewhat a gray dry and a friable appearance. So the lung parenchyma is going to turn into a gray color. It is going to be dry and friable. Moving on to the next and the final stage, that is the stage of resolution. So in the stage of resolution, what is there? The exudates, the whatever the exudates of the neutrophils are there that have got accumulated, that have got accumulated into the alveoli. They are going to be digested and removed by the scavenger cells. So the, there are very lots and lots of scavenger cells, particularly the macrophages. So they are going to be digested and removed by the scavenger cells and they can be coughed out. So the striking feature here is that these are the exudates of the neutrophils. They are either they are removed or digested by the scavenger cells or they are coughed out. Moving on to the 
next type of pneumonia that is the bronco pneumonia so the bronco pneumonia is commonly seen in the healthcare associated pneumonia so the patients who are admit, admitted or are given ventilatory support within 24 to 48 hours during the admission into the hospital so the pneumonia what occurs in them they can it can be the bronco pneumonia so this bronco pneumonia is basically here what the features what we find is that the neutrophilic exudates are present not only in the alveoli but the bronchi bronchioles and the alveoli that the egg neutrophilic exudate is going to be peripherally spreading to the bronchi bronchioles and to the alveoli and here in bronchopneumonia one or several lobes of the lung one or several lobes of the lung are involved particularly generally the lower and the posterior segments of the lobes are involved moving on to the next next category that is the interstitial pneumonia as the name itself is suggesting that this pneumon this in this pneumonia the exudates are going to not get uh, they are not going to get deposited within the lumen of the alveoli but they are going to lie the exudates are going to uh, surround the interstitial spaces that is the alveolar wall, the interstitial, uh, the exudates are going to be found in the alveolar wall and the connective tissue and the bronchovascular tree. So the most of the very important the, uh, causes of this uh, interstitial pneumonia, it can be either viral cause or it can be caused due to pneumocystis carnii infection. So students out there, one thing more I would like to discuss that pneumocystis uh, Jerovicae is actually a fungus. So, so pneumocystis Jerovicae fungi is responsible for causing interstitial pneumonia and the pattern of the lung or the pattern of the pathology can be seen. The lung can exhibit a diffuse or a patchy pattern when affected with interstitial pneumonia. So moving on to the last category of the series that is the miliary pneumonia. So the word miliary itself refers to it means minutes. Miliary word refers to minutes. So what is going to happen in this category it is that it is the hematogenous spread of the pathogen <coughs> to lung and it is going to lead to diffuse discrete two three mm lesions resembling the seeds of a millet. So here the miliary, in miliary pneumonia, the hematogenous spread of the infection, the hematogenous spread of the pathogen is going to occur to the lung and which can lead to, we can find there are lesions which are diffuse and discrete, so resembling the seeds of a millet. So students, in this way, the pathology of the pneumonia can be studied under the four subtypes, that is the lobar pneumonia, the bronchopneumonia, the interstitial pneumonia, and the miliary pneumonia. So the striking and the distinguishing feature between that of lobar pneumonia and bronco pneumonia is that that in case of the lobar pneumonia, only a particular segment or a particular lobe of the lung is involved. Whereas in case of bronco pneumonia, one or more, one or several lobes of the lungs can be involved. So this is the striking distinguishing feature between bronco pneumonia and lobar pneumonia. And particularly from the MCQ's point of view, when looking at the lobar pneumonia is very important, particularly the phenomena of the red hepatization and the green hepatization, it has been very frequently asked in various kinds of competitive examinations. So students, this was my discussion on the pathology of pneumonia. In the upcoming videos, I'll be talking of the clinical features, the investigations, what are being carried out for pneumonia and the treatment procedure. So students, if you do like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated about my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.